In 1982, I lost my legs in a mountain climbing accident. I had been a world-class climber, and my primary goal in life was to be the best in the world. But my doctor told me that I'd never be able to climb again. Thankfully, I, I did not listen to his prognosis. And using machining skills that I had learned in high school, I built in my family's barn artificial limbs that enabled me to return to the vertical world of rock and ice climbing. But they did so much more. Thank you. They augmented my climbing prowess. The limbs that I had built actually enabled me to climb at a more advanced level than I'd ever achieved before the accident. And I realized at that point that my doctor's prognosis was based on the limits of technology, not on the limits of human potential. Today, I co-direct MIT's K. Lisa Yang Center for Bionics. What is our mission? We seek to end disability in this 21st century through the advancement of technology and access. Approximately half the world's population suffers from some form of physiological or cognitive condition, resulting in unwanted disability. Amputation or seeing impairment or severe depression or anxiety, but it doesn't have to be this way. Through advancements in technology, we can renew our ability to move, to see, or to lift a mental health burden. Technology can bridge the chasm from unwanted disability to the abilities that we all seek. Across the long arc of innovation, humanity will make basic levels of physiological function a human right. Now, to solve the problem of disability at MIT, we're developing the most advanced bionic technology in the world. We're developing mechatronic limbs that are controlled through thought, restoring natural movement, power, uh, movement patterns um, under full brain control across a vast array of movements. These bionics even enable natural movements while manipulating a soccer ball and other complex maneuvers. We're also developing a digital nervous system to restore lost movements after a stroke or spinal cord injury. And nanoscale devices that exploit neural vasculature to emit therapeutic signals deep within the brain. Now, to solve human disability, bionic technology is, is not enough we also have to improve access of that technology to people in need. My MIT group has been rigorously working to build a sustainable prosthetic sector in the Western African nation of Sierra Leone. This region is arguably the most challenging region in the world to design and fit prostheses. If we can do it in Sierra Leone, we could be able to scale our methods in other regions of the world. Like tens of thousands of other Sierra Leone citizens, Mohamed Ba lost his limb in the country's civil war that ended in 2002. Rebel forces attacked his village, and as a young man, he escaped with his life, but he stepped on a landmine. Just as I was able to return to mountain climbing using artificial limbs, Mohamed can now walk freely with an artificial limb that we constructed for him. And he can reliably be spotted. Thank you. And his passions are soccer, so he can be reliably spotted on, on his uh, beloved soccer pitch. So restoring quality of life and renewing living independence for persons with disabilities is a moral imperative. Disabilities experienced by a friend or a family member is so common that we just accept it as part of the human condition. A great narrative of this 21st century will be the emergence of humans with technology resulting in the mitigation of disability caused by disease, traumatic injury, or birth defect, unleashing humanity's greatest potential. Thank you.